Votes for Women came, I'm, I think I'm correct in saying, in, in 1918, um, but on a more restricted basis, even with an enlarged franchise than, than was available in that uh, in 1918 um, for men, women, I think, had to be older than, than men and, and meet various property requirements and so on. What was the impact of, of that limited franchise for women in, in Ireland at that point? Well, it's interesting. Um, there had been in... Um, 1913 uh, a private members bill Dickinson's representation of the people bill that didn't get through but a very similar bill is the one that actually comes through in 1918 so in 1918 the first world war is still on the great war is still being fought but the parliamentarians are then discussing well we have to have elections at some stage there hadn't been elections there had been a coalition war government if you like and the main concern really was um, making sure that the young men who had fought in the trenches had the vote so in fact under the terms of the representation of the people act young men who were fighting who were aged 19 had the vote and women are still a bit of an afterthought i mean people think that they're the central focus of that act they're not but when you read the reports of the debate, you can see that some of the MPs are raising the fact that the suffrage movement has not gone away. You know, there have been representations by women throughout the war as to what is going to happen at the end of the war. Nobody wants a resurgence of militant suffrage activity. So that's one reason that I think um, they want to include women within the terms of the Act. They also see women now engaged in war work and see that women are actually totally capable of doing so much more than staying in the hearth and home. So for, for a number of elements they decide women have to have the vote but because for two things, one women are usually the majority of the population and secondly so many men have been killed during the war they can't have parity with men in terms of um, voting so they put the age restriction of 30 and it's still mm. a property basis so they have to have property be married to uh, somebody with property or be uh, rateable value property of more than five pounds so women end up being about 43 percent of the electorate for those elections and later on in November we have the Parliament Act which allows women to stand as parliamentary candidates as mm. well and in, in, in Ireland, there was, uh, there was uh, famously Countess Markovic was, was elected uh, uh, and became then subsequently a member of the, of the first uh, Dáil and the first Irish government. Um, but actually, there were very few women candidates um, put forward by Sinn Féin in that 1918 election. W was there, was there a, any pressure for more women candidates? Was it even on the agenda? Oh, absolutely. There were, you know, women had, had come together from various... Um, uh, organizations within the nationalist and labor spectrum and had formed what they first of all called the League of Women Delegates come in a chapter and they were talking about women and women's representation they in fact again Jenny Wise Power led a delegation composed of women like Helena Maloney women who'd been out in 1916 to Sinn Féin and asked for um, uh, quota for women on the Sinn Féin executive. This is before the big 1917 convention mm. because Sinn Féin had said with the prisoners being released there were going to be six seats reserved for the ex-prisoners. The women said well what about women and they didn't get that. Even women with that kind of seniority were really rebuffed. They finally at the Sinn Féin convention get four seats but the women are organizing amongst themselves because they want to be candidates. So Hannah Sheehy Skeffington, who comes back from America, wants to be a candidate, is offered North Antrim and is told, um, well, you know, it isn't a winnable seat, so she doesn't take up the offer. Kathleen Clark wants to stand in Limerick and feels that the machinations of Michael Collins and Harry Boland um, stopped her being it and she felt very very um, resentful about that so other women did want to stand Louis Bennett would have stood for the Labour Party if they had put forward candidates so the only other woman you have standing is Winifred Carney up in Belfast who was also out in 1916 in the GPO for the entire time first wom woman in last to leave um, totally in the confidence of James Connolly uh, but she stands for workers republic 
which isn't a Sinn Féin demand at that time. She stands in a very unionist constituency and gets less than 400 votes. So the Irish citizen is interesting. They have an editorial looking at the, the, the um, impact of the election, and they congratulate Ireland for having elected the first woman. Uh, because, you know, people like Christabel Panker stood in England and didn't get elected. But it's important to remember that Countess Markovic, who was in jail herself, couldn't campaign, had a very active electioneering team composed of Kamenaman and the Irish Women's Franchise League. They said in letters to each other, we can't let the first woman who's put up for election not be elected. Sinn Féin are not really taking this seriously enough. And they're the ones that do it. And they congratulate Dublin for having elected the first woman. But they also say, one woman elected, this is the measure of our sex equality. Um, and, and, you know, put down a marker for what is to come in the future. 